when you go through arraignment. Do you accept? They say you are charged with violating code section so and so. Are you guilty, not guilty, or, or nulla contender? Well, all three of those choices, nothing is there that says I object to the code. It all, you agree to the code, but you're guilty. You agree to the code, but you're not guilty. Or you agree to the code, no contest. Okay? So, I guess I've, I'm giving this here some sort of a paper. Ferretta waiver form. Yeah, right. Ferretta waiver form is the... By the way, the Ferretta waiver form, uh, where they're, they're saying, do you understand certain things or not, and so forth. And it's actually, let me have this back. I want to read the last sentence here because now you'll all see the significance of this. It says right here, uh, number seven, on what their... their uh, How do you spell Ferretta? It's F-A-R-E-T-T-A. Anyway, it says, your right to represent yourself may be ended an attorney, an attorney appointed for you and you may be excluded from the courtroom if you misbehave during this case or seriously disrupt the trial. That's true. And so forth. Anyway, if you elect to represent you, yourself, you will not be successful in any appeal based upon the quality of your representation. And so on. Well, alright. But notice they talk about representing yourself. What's really going on is that they're, they're giving you schizophrenia. They're splitting you. You, it's kind of like, you know, you've heard of the straw man concept. Okay, well, I don't understand that, but this is similar to it. And that is that in this capacity, you're an attorney. The, uh, the court is granting you the privilege to be an attorney, even though you're not, quote, licensed. All right? But, and on the other hand, you're you being represented by your other you, the attorney. Now, the minute you accept an attorney to represent the real you, you have admitted the jurisdiction of the court. Okay? Now, here's what the very last page says. The very last statement they say, or question. Do you now wish the court to permit you to represent yourself as your own attorney? Permit you. If you accept the permit... You're in their jurisdiction again, right? To represent yourself as your own attorney. No. When I go to court, I am myself. I am in my own capacity. There, now pass that thing. Okay? Right. So, anyway, back to this. The, the, the persons designated as magistrates, these are who they are. All the judges in California are magistrates. And yet the Constitution requires a court of record... So, they have to have some way to get around it. They do it with the arraignment process. Now, in a civil case, it's different. You go in as a civil case, they assign a judge, you walk in, there's no specific agreement to let the judge do the judging. But, by your actions, you enter into the contract. And all the TV shows, all the propaganda, is to educate you into accepting the judge as the authority. When in fact, if you're the plaintiff, you own the outfit. It's your court. You see the difference? <coughs> so you should always object to the penal uh, jurisdiction. You want that court of record. And where are they going to find the sovereign of the court? Well, they'll have to get it through a jury. But you don't ask for a jury. You just demand the, you just demand the court of record. You don't say you want a jury. <laughs> okay? You'll take a court of record without a jury, right? All they have to do is find the sovereign of the court. I don't think they can do it. Who's the people of California? Right. And if somebody does step forward and say, I'm, a, I'm the people of California, really? You're the whole outfit? <laughs> dictatorship? Does everybody know the meaning of the word dictatorship? <laughs> okay. So that's more, more stuff. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, what is this? Alright. What's a lawsuit? 
Well, here's old English law. A lawsuit, a suit, is the witnesses or followers of the plaintiff. That's what a suit is. You see, if you go back into biblical law, which I think is what? Leviticus is where it normally is. Okay? The old biblical law. The victim and the witnesses were responsible for the prosecution of the bad guy. Okay? So, here it is in old English law too. The witnesses are followers of the plaintiff. That's the uh, third volume of Black, Blackstone's Commentaries, page 295. So, um, but... In, when you have a, um, a court is the person and suit of the sovereign. What it is, is that the, the king is sitting on his throne. You're the king, you're on your throne, and you have the court. The court is all these courtiers that are in your, your court. Or, in other words, your witnesses. That's what it is. So, in modern law... They, they say a generic term of comprehensive signification and applies to any proceeding by one person or persons against another or others in a court of justice in which the plaintiff pursues in such court the remedy which the law affords him for the redress of an inquiry or the enforcement of a right, whether at law or in equity. Pretty well covers it, I guess. So that's what a, a, a suit is. So when you put this all together, I'm the sovereign sovereign plaintiff I have my suit that creates the court uh, I call it a court of record it's a very specific kind of court a court of record as opposed to any other kind of court it could be and in a court of record I've hired a magistrate state magistrate right judge but I make the decisions because I'm the tribunal I'm the king I sit on the throne all make sense? Okay, what's a tribunal? The seat of a judge, the place where he administers justice, the whole body of judges who compose a jurisdiction, a judicial court, a jurisdiction which the judges exercise. Well, yes, a judge, a real judge, does judging. But if you're a magistrate, you can't judge, because if you do, that makes you the tribunal. Okay? All judges in the California courts are magistrates. If you let them be tribunals, well, you can, but you can stop them, too. Okay. What's a court? The residence of a sovereign or similar dignitary, a sovereign and his officials and advisors as a governing power, an assembly of the retinue of a sovereign, an open space enclosed by a building or buildings, the space walled or marked off for playing a game, such as tennis or basketball. <laughs> <laughs> the place where justice is administered also a judicial body or a meeting of a judicial body okay now I want to I want to bring out something else as long as we're approaching it here minute orders ever heard of a minute order yeah. oh boy let me tell you something you're going to love this a minute order issued by a judge is not part of the record a minute order issued by a judge is not an order did you know that what it is, is this. This is all part of the scam again. In a court of record, you know that in a court of record, the judge or the magistrate cannot make any decisions. Only the tribunal can make decisions. Okay. So, this is mandated by the California Constitution. The 1879 version, the second one. Since they all agree that's it, I'll use it. All right? even though it's not the real Constitution. So, if it mandates a court of record, then uh, how are they going to run this thing? Well, what they do is they issue minute orders. As long as they can bamboozle you into thinking that that is an order, then they got away with it. Okay? Why, why is it called a minute order? Well, it's actually... That's what everybody says, a minute order. But let's say it correctly. It's a minute order. Minute. The word minute means small. Very small. Very small, right. In this case, it means small rather than very small. Okay? 
the reason what it is is this. Back in the old days, when they made up uh, court papers, you'd file your court papers. By the way, the word file means wire. Because when you filed your papers, you gave them to the clerk, the clerk put them in a pouch, and the pouch was hung on a wire. <coughs> it was hung on the file. Eventually, the word came to be used to mean you're given the papers. They are filed, right? They're put on the wire. So that's what file means. Well, in that same era, when they were filing papers on wires, whenever a court order was issued, it was written in a large hand so that everybody could read it. Remember, not everybody could read in those days. Literacy was pretty low. So they did it in a large hand. Those were all court orders were written in large hand. The clerk's notes were written in a minute hand, a small hand. Okay? So, anything that's minute in court terms are clerk's notes. And remember, the judge can act as a clerk. So, he issues a minute order. Now, he has not violated the definition of a court of record. Okay? In fact, no order has been issued at all. So, he can't be in violation of a court of records definition. So, if you accept it as an order, well then great. There you are. Yes. So when you file in papers and they, fi they stamp it received, they're not hanging it on the wire. Well, that in, in the old days that's true, but guess what? It still goes in the file and under common law, we don't care if it's received or filed. It's there for the world to read. It's there by sovereign authority, right? You filed it. Right? Yeah, and if you have trouble filing a paper... All you have to do is say to the clerk, file it on demand. Okay? The problem is this. The clerk, pretty much the job of the clerk is dependent upon the satisfaction of the judge. So, if the judge is not happy with the clerk, how many promotions or raises do you think the clerk will get? Okay? So, the, the judge is a very strong political force and a strong factor in the career of, of a clerk. Well, um, the clerk has a problem here because it's your court. And if you file something, it should be filed. So, how's the clerk going to deal with this serving two masters? Well, what they do is they have this little stamp call, and it says, when they stamp it, it says, filed on demand. Okay. And when you tell the clerk to file it on demand, she reaches under the counter, gets her little special stamp, stamps it filed on demand, and then when it goes to the judge, the judge looks at it, he knows that the clerk tried to carry out his scam, and it didn't work. See? So that's how you force a paper to be filed. Now, as an alternative technique, if it turns out that you have a lot of trouble, they're even refusing to file them on demand. I don't know if it'll still work, but in the past when we had real difficulties with the clerks on that, we would send them in by registered mail. And they always got filed. I have no explanation for that phenomenon. I just know that that has happened in the past. We were 100% successful by registered mail. Not mailing them in, but registered mail in. Okay? I'll leave it to somebody to do research on that. We were talking earlier about a criminal complaint and that they would refuse to file a cross complaint. Uh, could counterclaim. We, counterclaim. Could we do it on demand or? Well, we haven't tried that. Uh, we just, I, like I said, the last time I did it, I just rolled with it. It didn't matter because, see, it's the whole LA court system. You understand that every county has only one court. You don't have a county with two courts. You might have a county with several divisions within the court. You might have a county with several court buildings, but there's only one court in any county. So if you have a criminal proceeding here, at least theoretically, you should be able to have a counterclaim over in the civil division. It should be a counterclaim. But I ran into so much ignorance that I just went ahead and scratched out stuff, and because it's all heading stuff anyway, headings don't affect substance. Okay? 
Y'all, y'all understand why I was able to do that, right? I see, don't understand it. Well, whose court is it? Mine. You know, there's a rule in the courts, in the rules of court, that says that things have to be a certain way, you know, whatever. And then there's a little freedom clause that says something to the effect, unless the court orders otherwise. Okay? So, if your, if your papers don't really match up, you could have it filed by sovereign command, sovereign order. Of course, that's what you're doing when you say file on demand anyway. But, you know, um, I tend to sometimes get practical rather than fight out every little issue. And so, you know, if it didn't, again, titles and headings do not affect the substance of your suit. So as long as the clerk said nothing about the substance, I said, well, what do you want? What are your requirements? Now, you know that no clerk can give advice, right? You've heard that over and over again. All right. When you go up to a clerk, don't ask for advice. You're not going to get it. But what you can do when you run into a problem, all you have to do is say to the clerk, well, what do you require? Now she's not advising you. She's telling you what she requires. Yes, sir. A suggestion on this, instead of scratching things out and doing it that way, make everything the way you want it and make a cover sheet with titling the way, the way they want it and put on the right side cover sheet. That's a good idea. Never thought of that. Excellent idea. Sure. Make up the cover sheet the way they want and right behind it you have the way you want it. Yeah. That, that, that shows your real intent. Yes. I did that in federal district court uh-huh. and they, they read through it. They were reading to it before they took it back to the uh, judge's court. Sure. And what happened? They kicked it back. Okay. Well, you can't, you can't win them all unless you want to fight it out. But, you know, like I said, the, the, the titles, and, titles and, and, um, and headings do not control. What controls is the substance that's written in your paragraphs. So, in the paragraph, I identified the parties as counter defendants or you know we're the counter plaintiffs and they're counter defendants and we cited the case by the way when you do a counter a counter claim on a criminal proceeding you need to take all of the paperwork that's available to you the criminal complaint whatever you got and enclose a copy with your complaint if and only if you have new defendants okay if, if you do a counterclaim against the state, it's like the state versus you, and you're going to do a you versus the state, then you don't have to do that. But if it becomes you versus the district attorney, or you versus the public defender that's forced on you, then you need to have a copy of the complaint because he is a new defendant. Okay, so you make sure you put a copy of the, of the uh, original criminal complaint. They have, the, the, the defendants, the counter defendants should have some understanding of what the fight's all about. So they're entitled to a copy of the paperwork. Okay, well... Okay, now here's another interesting thing. You'll like this one. Uh, The proceedings of the courts of common law are records, but every minute made by a clerk of a court for his own future guidance in making up his record is not a record. There you are. See a minute order? Not a record. What is a record of a court? All a record is, is a list of what was the issue and what was the decision made. That's it. That's the record. The real record. Now, I know we get kind of sloppy with our language, even in legal language. And so, we tend to say everything's a record. You know, we get a copy of the docket sheet and that's the record. Well, Technically speaking, the record is only those points where what was the issue to be decided? Like a motion to dismiss was made. Was it granted or denied? That is the record, regardless of the other print around it. Yes. That's the docket then? Well, it's part of the docket. Okay. Cause it's usually, in, it's cause buried in the docket. Because in the docket, we find a list of what you just described. Yes. Plus, we'll find a description of the minute order issued by the judge in that docket. Yeah, but that's not an order, is it? We, I know, but they label a minute yeah, so order, but if it's listed put, in the docket, then would it be official? Well, the clerk, no, no. 
the record is the actual... Look, it says, well, read it right here. The proceedings of the courts of common law are records, but every minute made by a clerk of court for his own future guidance in making up his record is not a record. So I made some extra notes. It's mixed in with the real record. You know, they don't distinguish it. They don't put one in black ink and the other in red ink. You know, it's all mixed together. But you should understand that the real record is the issue that was, the motion that was presented, for example, the issue that came up and what decision was made. Everything else is notes. Well, actually, isn't the record what the court reporter writes? No, I just told you. It's the decision that was made on the issue that was raised. The court reporter is just, that's a side thing. I mean, sure, they make mention of it. They say who the court reporter is, and sometimes you put in a copy. It's nice that you have all that history. But a record specifically means what was the issue and what was decided. Not how it was decided, but what was decided. Okay? Read the next paragraph here. Proceedings in courts of chancery, that's equity, by the way, are said not to be, strictly speaking, records, but they are so considered. Now, there you are. They're not records, if you really, really want to get strict on the meaning of what record is. But, it's obvious the notes are important and everybody's interested. So, they call them records, even though it's not accurate. What's equity? What is that? Well, the story goes that the king laid out all these laws, and those laws he created were called common law. And then the judges could only make decisions based on the law. And if, if it wasn't in the law that the king made, you couldn't recover. So that wasn't too satisfactory. So what they did, the only, the only thing you could do is if you didn't like the results of the law, you had to go to, directly to the king. Well, the king got busy, so he, he created a new class of judge, only he didn't call them judges. What he called them was uh, chancellors. So the chancellors were in the equity courts. Equity, like fair play, okay? And so the, the chancellor was the king's right-hand man. The chancellor could make law on the spot, as opposed to the judges who could only judge a case based on pre-existing law. So the chancellor would make up a law to cure some sort of problem, whatever it may be. So the court of chancery is an equity court. And the, and the judge that's sitting in the, in the equity court is not properly called a judge. He's actually called a chancellor. Yes? So, so in other words, after 1938... When they Start over. You were away from the mic. After 1938, talking. when they blended law and equity together to have this new type... They of didn't blend it together. What happened was that they took these words and they put them in the same book. Okay. They mixed them, but they weren't blended. So okay. that there, because of the fact that the Constitution of the United States says the judicial power is available in all cases in law and equity, and because the Seventh Amendment says that no decision by a jury... It, uh, sitting in a case at law can be reviewed in any court because the Constitution makes a distinction they cannot pass any legislation to erase that border so what they did because after all uh, frankly common law makes it tough for judges to screw you so what you do what they did is they they went as far as they constitutionally could go and that is they listed them all in the book and uh, they don't tell you which one's common law and which one's equity. And if you look at uh, specifically the, the rules of court, and I think it's rules 7A and B and C, and I'm not fresh on this, but I think rules B and C contradict each other because one of them's common law and the other's equity. But so, if you read it closely, they seem to contradict each other. So how would you define the Nisi Prius court? Well, that's a whole separate issue. That has nothing to do with your first question, right? Okay. You're raising a new question. Well, af after 1938, they blended... No, no, 1938 has nothing to do with that. The Constitution is the same today as it was then. Well, okay. I know that, but... Huh? I know that, but then we have corporation courts. Well, that may be, but that's another issue. Okay. Okay? okay. If you don't want a corporation court, insist on a court at law. Okay. 
you know, in, insist on a court of record. And if they don't give you a court of record, the obvious next step is to do a counterclaim because they went beyond their jurisdiction. Right. Only a court of record is authorized. Okay? That's the only way they can get jurisdiction on you is with a court of record. And with a court of record, the requirements are very tough with a court of record. They have to have an injured party. No in, if nobody's injured, where's the, where's the case? Where's, I mean, that, that's what it is. You're entitled to a jury of peers, meaning sovereigns. There's, there's all kinds of stuff in courts of record that, are, that make it tough for them. The yeah, yeah. You see, you're innocent until proven guilty when you're in a court of record. When you're, when you're in an administrative court, corporate court, whatever you want to call it, you're guilty until proven innocent. Yes, sir. You need, you need the exercise. There you go. Do you ever ask if the uh, court is in chambers or in session? It's always in session. It doesn't matter if you're in chambers. The court is always in session. You look at it. It's, it's somewhere, even in, the, uh, even in the statutes, they say the courts are always open. And it's true. There is a judge on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in every county in California. Okay? There's always somebody who's got the duty assignment. Yes? Um, when I was arrested with t one time, and I wouldn't give them jurisdiction, they uh, finally said, okay, come with us, and halfway down the hall... They said, unless you submit to the jurisdiction, I said those exact words. Um, the Supreme Court has, has said that the uh, court is open uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. That's right. And they said to me, back to the slammer. <laughs> well, I mean, they break the law. I mean, we have, I keep going back to that example. You know, you're going down the street. Robbery's outlawed, but you can still be robbed, you know. So, yeah, you want to tell me cops break the law, I understand that. That happens. Okay, so, the, uh, okay, so strictly speaking, the courts of chancery, the equity courts, are not courts of record, and therefore the, the, the records that they keep are not true legal records. So a minute order is their way of getting around that requirement. But it's not a perfect way. The weakness in it is that they've got to somehow take advantage of your ignorance. Because if you find out, that blows the game. Now, if you find out, you let them know that you found out, they may not believe you. In fact, they'll choose not to believe you, even if they do believe you. So, you know, it's not, on a practical level, it's difficult. But the, if you're talking strictly legal theory... Um, if you know what you're dealing with, you know, if you know that a, a minute order is not an order, that's easy to counter, counteract. In fact, in, the, in what we did just recently in a case, and of course we haven't followed through yet because they're choosing to break the law as far as I'm concerned, but they issued a, they, they issued a minute order putting a person in Patton State Hospital. And we issued an order signed by the patient uh, ordering them to let her go because it was a minute order and not a real order. Now, they haven't responded to that, but you see, they could get in trouble over this one. Because here's the thing. These guys down here on the lower level, well, there was a guy named Gotha who was a uh, philosopher in Germany. And he said that there's nothing so fearful as ignorance in action. So, uh, we're dealing with a lot of ignorance. And these people, you know, you, you bring them the law, you can give them all the explanations, but their arrogance takes precedence. Their arrogance, you know, you give a gun to a baby, he could hurt somebody. And uh, here, th these people are this way. So, but you're building this record. At some point, somebody's going to lose his job. Something's going to crack on this because... There are people higher up who do understand these things and will not trash the system just to win this one case. That's my theory. 
Now, I have to tell you, if everybody up and down the line is against you, you're not going to win. Yeah. 